Welcome back to Lamb Vision Studios. Today I have another Unreal Engine 5.1 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to create water and how to create a small island landscape just using assets from Quixel Bridge. To get started we're going to go to File and let's go up to New Level and this time we're going to create an empty level. We're going to kind of refresh our memory on the last tutorials on what to do to create a level from scratch. So what we want to do is we want to create the lighting for the scene. So let's go up to Window and go to Environment Light Mixer and go ahead and create all these lights. Now you don't have to have these lights in your project. That's just depending on what kind of project you're doing. But they're always good to be able to see what you're working on. Now that we have a light, we're going to go ahead and create a landscape because we want to make some water. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and save this level. And we'll save current level as, and we'll name it something like Island Test Map. And click Save. So let's go ahead and create the landscape. I showed you guys in this in a previous tutorial, but if you don't remember, we can just go up to the top left hand corner and click Landscape. So as you see, we don't have a material for our landscape. So to do that, we are actually going to go into Quixel Bridge. For this beach scene, we will need some sand. Click on this icon and click on Quixel Bridge. Let's find a material for our landscape. All right, once Quixel Bridge is open, you'll make sure you sign in. If you don't know how to make a Quixel Bridge account or get Quixel Bridge, make sure you check out my last tutorial. All right, so what I want you to do is go up to the search bar and type in trampled. I know that sounds weird, but we're gonna be looking for trampled sand. So just scroll down until you see trampled sand and you want to look for something that looks like a beach. So we're going to use this dry trampled sand. So just click on it, download it. And you can choose whichever quality you want all right, once it's done downloading, just click Add, and it should add it to your content browser. All right, once it pops up in your content browser, you're just going to take it and drag it onto your material. Now when we create this landscape, it will already be on the landscape. We're going to change the location to zero. This makes it easier to line up the water. Let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. Let's do it a thousand by a thousand and it will change it to 946 by 946. That's totally okay. Let's go ahead and hit create. All right, so now you see we have this beautiful sand texture that's on the ground. It looks just like a beach. So what we want to do now is enable the water plugin. To do that, go to edit, plugins, and go to the search bar and type in water. Make sure that these two plugins are enabled. Once they're enabled, click on this icon in the top left hand corner, go down to All Classes, scroll down until you see your water plugins. You should have a ton of different water options here. I'm not going to explain all these today, but today we will go over the ocean. So click on Water Body Ocean. Uh-oh, we seem to have a problem. The water is way above the landscape, so we just need to change the location. And that's pretty simple. All we have to do is go to Outliner, Water Body Ocean, Details, go to Location under Transform, and click this icon to reset the property value. And now you see, you'll see your water is perfectly going up with your island. You can also adjust this island however you want. I like this scene, but I think the sky could be a little darker. If you want to adjust the sun, let's go ahead and do that. To do that, press and hold left control. Then hit L while you're holding control. Now if you move your mouse while holding control down still, you can see that the sun will move in whatever direction your mouse goes. So if we wanted the sun to kind of hit off the water, we could just put it right there or somewhere that looks nice. Now you see we have a sunset in the scene. 
So if you wanted to, we could actually change the size of this island. If you want to do that, just click on Water, Body, Ocean. And you can click on these spine points. So now we have a little bit of a different shape. If you wanted to add spline points, you could do that as well. To add spline points, all you want to do is go to Water Body Ocean again. Right click in the middle here of this line and it should tell you that you can add a spline point here. And we could adjust that if we wanted to. So I'm going to kind of make it dip inwards like this. And we could add another spline point there. And you can make this whatever shape that you want. Okay. So now that we have the shape of our island and our ocean, now we want to add some assets to make this ocean come alive. If your project is running slow and you just want to import assets a lot faster and it's just becoming way too slow to work with, you can always change the visual settings or the graphic settings of your project to work a little bit easier. So you can just go up to settings in the top right hand corner, come down to engine scalability settings and click low. Alright, so when you search for beach, you're just going to find some rocks that match the color of the material of your landscape. So I chose this rock here, kind of looks like it. I might use this one and this one as they're all pretty similar colors. And you could also throw some mismatched rocks in there as well. So you see I imported this one. And we're just going to scale it up, make it a little bit bigger. And you should see your rock in your project. You'll also see the size of your assets compared to your actual character. This will become really important whenever you're adding doors and things to your buildings. So let's just add some more rocks. So what you'll have to do is actually set the collision for all of these items individually. I know that kind of sucks, but that's what we have for now. So if we want to make this item where it has collision, we're just going to go up to static mesh and find where the static mesh is. Click on it. So now we see we have my ground here. And the reason I'm showing you guys this is just in case you want to use these for a floor. So once you've clicked on the object, you're just going to go into the search board and type in collision. And then you'll go under collision here. And then you'll see where collision complexity is. Make sure that collision presets is set to block all or block all dynamic. Let's add box simplified collision. So once you have created your box collision, come down to collision complexity and make sure it's set to use complex collision as simple. It'll probably be project default, but set it to use complex complexity as simple. As you see, it is creating a collision there for pretty close to the ground. Might be a little bit of adjusting you can do there. But now that we have that, we're just going to click save. All right, so now when we play our level, we shouldn't fall through the floor. And there you go. So now we're actually on this top layer. All right, so now we need to do that with the rocks as well. You may want to do this before you copy and paste and use the same rock over and over again. Sorry, I didn't mention that before, but yes, that is important. So we're going to set a another collision for these rocks. So let's just click on a rock, go to static mesh, open it up, go to collision, and add a box simplified collision. Go to the search bar, type in collision. Go to your collisions tab, scroll down until you see collision complexity. Make sure it's on block all. And again, use complex collision as simple. As you see, it will create a collision for this object. Click save. Now we're going to see if we can run through this rock. Keep in mind, if you haven't set up a player start, your player should be dropped wherever your camera is. 
All right, let's go up to the rock. All right, so now you see I can't walk through the rock. So it definitely worked. Now you can adjust this based off of your shape of your item. If you want it to be more tight to the ground, you can do that. But now you see we can at least walk on top of this rock, and now it's a solid object. pretty neat. Alright, so so far we have an island, water, and rocks. Now I'm just going to add a couple of crates to the scene to just kind of give it a little bit more life. Uh, maybe some crates have washed up on the shore or there's crates around the beach. Okay, so when we play it you'll see that the mountains around me kind of take shape with the crates. We'll go ahead and size those up to the character. As you see they're a little bit small right now. Okay, so the crates are kind of big now. I might make some big ones and small ones. But to do that, we're going to go ahead and make some collision on this one. So, same thing. Just back out. Go to the static mesh. Collision. Add box simplified collision. Type in collision on the search bar. Collision complexity, use complex collision. All right. So now when we walk into this crate, we cannot go through it. It is a solid object. And when you use the collision complexity, you'll see that I can actually go inside of this box And it's not just one big box. It's meaning I, I would normally not fall through this if I didn't have that collision on. It would keep me at the top. Okay, so we've went over quite a bit in this tutorial. We have went over how to create water, how to use the water plugin, as well as how to add materials to our landscape, and how to add assets to your landscape to give it a little bit more life. In the next tutorial, I'll be going over how to create foliage to be able to create plants and things faster for your landscapes. I'll actually show you two different ways to do that, the slow and fast way. We will also be going over how to add gravity and physics to objects so you can move them around. And we'll be going over how to make this ocean look a little better, adding waves and effects and textures just to make it look a little bit better or customize it however you want. I hope this tutorial helped you out just a little bit. If it did, let me know what you liked about it in the comments. I'll see you on the next tutorial. This is Land Vision Studios.